So I've built the Bubba oscillator from the diagram, single op amp, 1K ohm, 0.1 microfarads. I'm all set up. We have the power supply or the um, bias voltage is one volt. And we're monitoring the scope. And we see that we have not much signal on our scope. I've turned on my power supply. I've checked the wattage, uh, the um, um, 12 volt minus 12 volt supply is 2 milliamps. The positive is 2 milliamps, so I know I'm in good shape. But I have no oscillation. So the next step is to increase the gain of the op amp. I know that in my circuit, rotating the potentiometer to the left will increase the gain. So I'm going to do that as I monitor the scope. So if I increase the gain, we see the oscillation develop. All right? So we know that we must have met the Barkhausen criterion. Now at this point, we want to check the purity of this waveform by comparing it to the arbitrary waveform signal. So we'll connect that signal next. So I've connected my ARB, and which is the blue signal, and we see it rotating to the right. This just indicates that the frequency of the two signals are not the same. If I zoom in on my um, oscillator, it's 1.562 kilohertz. So we'll go over and change that. 1.562 kilohertz. And then we see that the frequencies are much closer. If the waveform is moving to the right, that means you must increase its frequency. And if I do that, I see quite quickly that I can almost make the wave stand still. I will freeze the display so we can uh, download that data. So now I'm at 1.566 kilohertz on the ARB, 1.567. The frequency is not so critical, just that you are relatively close to that value. If I unfreeze the display, you'll see there changes a little. Even if you put your hands over your circuit, you'll see some changes will affect. You can actually affect your circuit by putting your hands over the circuit. This. Uh, this circuit is very sensitive to external capacitances. If I touch any value, it will change dramatically. So it will settle down after a little bit. Again, it moved to the right, so I need to increase the frequency a little bit, but I can get it to track in. So it changed its frequency somewhat. But get to a uh, convenient uh, value that is we know is the correct frequency so we can compare the two waveforms. We'd like to do a direct comparison of the waveforms so that we can uh, we can reasonably judge the the quality of the waveform. So we see there that the two waveforms are quite similar. Frequencies are extremely close. So from one end of the pot to the center is 4.1 meg ohms. We will now measure the ohms between the other end and the center, and we see that value is 1.03. So the gain is 4.01 over 1.03, very close to the calculated value of 4. Now for this part of the circuit, I have broken the feedback loop by disconnecting the connection from the last op amp to the gain potentiometer. I simply move my R and C, my final R and C over to another point which broke the loop. Now I'm going to inject the signal from the ARB now into the amplifier. So I'm going to monitor that signal and also probe other points. Now if I, once I power on, I see that I get a distorted wave. And that's because the ARB signal is too large. 
so we can reduce the ARB signal. Okay, so we are set up for the measurements. I am recording the frequency, the peak-to-peak -peak voltage of the, the yellow is channel 1, and the input is channel 2, the blue one, and then the phase between them. So if I see the values, which you should record, we see 1.582 kilohertz, that's not critical, but we see the output of the first op amp is 7.94 volts, and the input is 2.01, so close to uh, 4, which was the desired gain. And the phase, of course, is very close to 180 degrees, 172 point. So you record those values. Now we have moved to the output of the next amplifier in the chain, just after the uh, negative feedback gain amplifier. We see the frequency is the same. Now the uh, output of that amplifier is smaller, 5.7 uh, volts peak to peak. The input is still the same and the phase shift is now 128 degrees. Now what has happened is that RC network has caused a loss of that freq at that frequency, about 0.707. So if you multiply 8 times 0.707, you get very close to 5.6 which is the value we see. So record those values. Now we move to the next amplifier and we can see frequency is the same. Now the voltage has dropped a little more because now we're another 0.707 drop. So that's about half of the original. We started out at 8 volts and now we're about 4 volts peak to peak. The input is again the same. The phase is now very close to 90 degrees, uh, 85.17. So if I compare the two signals directly using the same magnitude function, three hundred ten millivolts per division in this case and adjust the uh, bias. There is a DC offset on the output signal because of the bias uh, potentiometer. But if I adjust those values, you can see that the input to the amplifier and the output of the amplifier are almost exactly the same value in terms of the AC quantity. We see Voltages are nearly the same as we noted before, and the phase is very close to zero degrees in the milli, milli degrees, if you will. Now I can adjust the one, the uh, yellow signal or the input a little bit to show the bias, but and you can see that the two signals are indeed very similar to one another. If I change the scale on the input signal, you can see it change but in terms of their values, they are essentially equal to one another with no phase shift. This then satisfies the Barkhausen criterion that the gain around the loop for oscillation must be one at zero degree. So that is the main part of the laboratory.